Hey everyone, today I'm going to try out all three of these pasta cutters on my carnivore noodles. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes, other cooking ideas. These things have helped me lose over 125 pounds and I hope you check out some of my other videos. For those of you who are returning viewers, welcome back. I hope you liked today's video. Okay, so today I'm going to make some carnivore noodles um, and I'm going to cut them with a cutter. And I have three different cutters here. And uh, we're gonna see which one, uh, you know, they're like uh, expensive, uh, fairly cheap, and even, even more cheap. So we're gonna see which one actually does the best job. Um, maybe they're all the same, uh, I don't know, but before I can do that, we need a batch of carnivore noodles. So I am making the basic carnivore noodles that are um, chicken with egg and egg white. There's basically three ingredients. If you want to add salt, you can. Uh, the other thing is I want to point out, because this is important for a lot of you, those of you who are doing beef, butter, bacon and eggs, BBBE, you can use ground beef in this recipe. Um, I have done it before. I have a video where I've done it, so I'll link that below. But it's basically the exact recipe, just swap out the poultry with um, ground beef. Um, oh, and the other thing I want to mention is that I'm using canned chicken. You can use fresh, you know, like uh, pulled chicken. I'm sure you could use pulled pork or, you know, any type of any type of meat that you can blend and get down to a smooth paste can go in here. And in fact, when I was at the store, I m went to grab a can of chicken and I accidentally grabbed turkey. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's a very forgiving recipe. Um, also, in the amounts, okay? So when I made the recipe originally, the reason I went with three and a half ounces is because that's what happens to be in these cans. It is more forgiving than that. If you have four ounces or maybe you only have three ounces, it's not gonna make a big difference. So, you know, um, yeah, just don't don't worry about it. It's, it was just a convenient amount for this size of can. There's also one egg in, in this recipe and two thirds of a cup egg whites. Pinch of salt, if, if you like, and that's it. So I'm going to start uh, assembling that now. Oh, I'm going to turn the oven on 350 degrees. If you are just making one batch like I am, you can just use a magic bullet or a small sized blender like this. If you're going to double it or triple it, um, use a full size blender. Uh, this, this one is just for convenience. Um, I'm going to blend it all in here and then I'm going to pour the batter into a large pan. This is an 11 by 17 inch pan. I'm just going to check that it might be 18 inch. No, it doesn't say. Anyways, it's about 11 by 17 is the right size. And this is the um, silicone liner that I like to use because it has the little lip on it so that the stuff does like I, what I used to use just a flat mat. The stuff that gets onto the pan is, you know, it can really stick to the pan. And so um, I do prefer the one with the lip. I've had some people tell me that they are available on Amazon. I, I don't know if they are this exact size. So be careful about the size. Make sure you get one for your pan. I will link this one below. It is from Epicure. I don't sell Epicure. I have a friend who does. Um, so, you know, do what's best for you. Uh, but I will provide the link to, to this. Now, uh, just one more before I get going on this, one more uh, comment. I had a couple of people tell me that during the heat wave, they took the batter I'm about to make and they used their crepe pan on the stovetop so that they didn't have to turn their oven on. That definitely works as well. It takes a little more technique because you, 
you know, you're, you're going to have to probably make it in two or three batches, I would think. Um, and you want to get an even thinness. But if, if you are adept at using this little crepe pan, go for it. Um, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. Okay, so let's get going on the recipe. I'm going to open up my can of turkey. I almost said chicken. Now I'm going to, I'm going to drain it um, because there's a lot of liquid in here. And the egg. Uh, you could probably, if you wanted to, uh, up the eggs and then um, use less egg white. I know some people are sensitive to egg whites. So, you know, do what works for you. I'm going to add just a pinch of salt, optional. I, I do know that some people also add, um, you know, other things like garlic powder or onion powder. Um, you know, you can, you can certainly do that. Okay, we're going to give that a blend until it's smooth. You want it to be a nice smooth paste. Well, not sort of a thin paste. Okay. Looks pretty smooth to me. And then just pour it into the middle of your pan. And then I like to just kind of do this so that it spreads on its own. This is why I love the, <laughs> the rim around it. You can't do this with the flat one. The other thing is that if your oven rack is uneven, you want to watch that because uh, like what I would do is I would put it in for five minutes and then turn it around and that might help um, because otherwise you'll get like a really thin part and a thick part. Um, I've also seen other people um, do the recipe on YouTube and that's great. Thanks for doing my recipe. But in a smaller pan, the problem is that the recipe is made for this size of pan. And if you do a smaller pan, you're going to have sort of thick, spongier noodles. It's better to, if you only have small pans, do it in two small pans, you know, to, to kind of spread the joy around here. Um, but yeah, we're just waiting now for the oven, which will be ready any second. I'm going to put it in, takes about 10 to 12 minutes. I definitely recommend that you check it at 10 minutes. If you see that the edges are starting to curl up, it's, it's done. Um, so, you know, definitely check it at 10 minutes, uh, pull it out if you need to. And if your oven rack is, uh, tilty. Check it at five minutes in case you want to turn it around. So I'm going to see you in the next segment when we pull it out of the oven. Okay, so this was actually 14 minutes. Um, I do believe that my new oven here does run hotter than what my old oven used to. Uh, so I pulled it out as soon as this corner started lifting up. If you can see that bottom corner there, then uh, that's kind of what you're looking for. And uh, the rest of it, it looks like it's a pretty even. So uh, I, I think my oven is, you know, the racks are pretty even. You want to let this cool down 100% before you start running it through these uh, pasta cutters. So I am going to uh, let it do that, be patient, and I will be back in the next segment ready to cut the noodles. Okay, so this has been drying out and it's been pulling away from the sheet while it's been drying out. Um, and I wanna try to get it off the sheet. Um, I do have a couple of cracks in here, um, which can be a little problematic, but we're just gonna forge ahead. I'm going to cut this into thirds because I'm going to be testing three different cutters. This is kind of a guesstimate, but just going to make three sheets here. 
Okay, so this is a problem with the pizza cutter. I have said some people, oh, you know, they've said to me, oh, just use a pizza cutter. Well, I guess I don't have a very steady hand because <laughs> I can never get that thing to... I hope I don't drive that way as well, but... So I'm just going to see if I can peel the rest of this off without losing any. You know, this almost makes me feel like I should have left it in for another moment because it is still, still kind of sticking to the pan a bit, but I am going to gently get it off. I've never had to spray the pan before, um, and maybe the difference is the can of turkey, but... I don't, I don't think so. Anyways, I'm hoping we're gonna get off enough to test these cutters. Yeah, so I've, I've broken it, but it's still gonna be enough to test the cutters. We have three sheets and that's the main thing. Okay, so this sheet here, I'm gonna have to cut the crispy parts off and that's what Teddy is waiting for down here. He knows the drill. He likes these crispy bits. They are carnivore, so he's pretty happy with having a little bit of turkey and egg. Give him a piece of end. Teddy, you need to sit down? Oh, good dog. There you go. Yeah. We'll save that for him. Okay, so we're going to talk about this one first. I have it on my KitchenAid. This is a no-name KitchenAid attachment because the actual KitchenAid attachment would have been a lot more money. So you can pay for this. <clears throat> you can pay anywhere from uh, what I paid, which was $69 Canadian, all the way up to over $100. So the advantage is that you don't have to turn it manually, you know, with the crank. Um, the other advantage is built into this one little unit, there's a fettuccine cutter, a roller, and a spaghetti cutter. So the roller, of course, is only used if you're going to be baking the traditional pasta dough that goes through and you, you know, want to get it to a certain uh, thinness or thickness, depending on what type of pasta you're making. Um, the other, you know, it, it's obviously going to be powered off your machine. And uh, so I've used this and I found it easy to clean. You just have to wait for, if anything does get caught in the rollers, you just wait for it to dry and then you can just uh, pick it out with, uh, like they've provided a couple of brushes so you can, you know, just kind of go in and get the pieces out. Oops, that's not a brush. These are the two brushes. Um, there's a little booklet. So um, this one here, I would think would be suitable for the power user, <laughs> someone who's churning out lots of pasta, maybe, uh, Maybe your Italian Nona would love this, um, making lots of pasta and uh, traditional as well as, as keto. So let's see how it works. Yeah, I'll get a bowl. Hopefully I've got it placed under there right. So I found the trick with this one is getting it started. So I'm just going to turn it on and if you get one little corner started, the rest will follow. So there we go. Okay. So then it's just a matter of, uh, you know, they're gonna stick together a little bit. Then it's just a matter of pulling them apart and using them in your favorite protein pasta dish. So there we go. So that's that one, um, but expensive, you know. Uh, so you really, to justify it, I mean, you really would have to be making a lot of pasta. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that aside for a moment and we'll talk about the middle range option, which is, I paid $20 for this and, um, but it was on sale and that's Canadian dollars 
Uh, this one is, it's, it's uh, got a little bit of heft to it. It has the same as this. It's got rollers that can be adjusted to different thicknesses depending on what you're making. It has the fettuccine cutter and the spaghetti cutter, and I've, I've used both. I've used them on the BBBE noodles. Um, they, it worked. You know, I thought these were gonna be a pain to clean, but the trick is to whatever gets caught in there, you just let it dry out, and then you can just brush it out or, or pick out the pieces with a, with a toothpick. Like you, you can just, you know, find the place where there's some caught in the teeth. And it, it comes out quite easily. And even just after you let it dry out, even just giving it a little shake, you'll, you'll find it, it comes out fairly easy. This one also has a clamp, so you can clamp it to your counter if you're going to do some power pasta making. I'm just doing the one sheet, so I'm not gonna bother putting it on the, the counter. Um, this handle, pops out. This is the roller part, fettuccine and spaghetti. So there's a notch for each one of those three things. And I think I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna try spaghetti. So ideally your counter should have a lip to, to get a good grip on that. Um, the handle can pop into the roller, the fettuccine or the spaghetti. And it just, there's not really anything holding it in there, but I'm just doing the one sheet, you need to have a little bit of clearance for the handle, that's why you want it on the edge. So, let me see here, I'm gonna take, oops, okay, I, I really broke it. But that's okay because I've done that before and you can just feed even the small pieces through. I'm actually going to just cut this so that at least it's kinda all the same width. Let's see, it might be a little thick to go through the spaghetti one, but I'm gonna give it a try. Again, the trick is just to get it started. No, it's not grabbing on. You wanna have like a nice clean edge for it to grab onto. That one's folded over. And I find that a diagonal cut seems to work well. Okay. Let's see. Come on, get in there. I've cut a real point here so that I can just insert it, hopefully enough to get a grip. So you can see your, your nice clean edge is everything with this one. Oh, here we go. Once it grabs on, it works fairly well, except for I folded it over here. Okay, okay. doesn't like that fold over part, so I'm gonna see if I can recover. Oh, here we go. Okay, so you can see that we have some thinner noodles. Now they are, uh, looks like they're breaking apart a bit. So um, that's okay for soup or whatever. Um, so, but there we go. And I'm gonna let this uh, dry and, oh, actually I'm gonna finish the, the pieces here because, actually I'll, I'll flip this over to fettuccine so you can see that one. So it's nice and easy to, to change on the fly kind of thing. Getting it started seems to be the sticking point. Let's get in there. You don't want to get your fingers in there either. I'm going to kind of slant it over a bit. Make sure they're going in the bowl. Okay, so there's some more fettuccine noodles. So yeah, even if it's breaking apart, you can still run it through. So that's good. Yeah, I honestly think that I should have left this in the oven for a couple more minutes.
because these are uncharacteristically soft. But, uh, you know, still getting... I, I haven't baked pasta noodles, or at least not this carnivore one, since I've moved here. I've only baked the BBBE ones. And I've tried the BBBE ones with all three. Actually, not with this one yet. No, not with this one. Okay, so there's our noodles from the two, and now we just have this. Okay, so last on the list is this handheld pasta cutter. It is uh, under $10 on Amazon.com. On Amazon.ca, I paid 10 bucks for it. Um, so it is the smallest and simplest of the three. The only thing is that you get one size, but I mean, for the recreational user of these pasta noodles, this this might, you know, be perfect. So I'm going to see how it works. It, to me, it seems like it would work uh, just like a pizza cutter, except you'd get straight lines and not crooked lines like the ones that I do. So let's give this a whirl. Okay, you have to press hard. I can see that I'm... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's working. So these ends are a bit tough because we've got the crispy edge here. I'm gonna take that off. More for the dogs. I'm gonna take it off on this edge too. Okay. Um, and I guess the advantage of this one is that you don't have to pick it up in a broken, you know, sheet that's almost broken and uh, try to get it through the cutter. You just have to leave it in place where it is and pull down. All right, so we have pasta noodles. So now that I'm actually touching these noodles, um, I, I'm 100% certain that they should have baked a couple minutes longer. Um, my, I'm finding that my oven in this new kitchen is quite a bit different from my old one. Um, so you want these noodles, they should be feeling kind of dry to the touch um, and they are a little bit wet. I'm still going to use them and uh, I will probably make something this week with them. And uh, they're, I mean, they're gonna work, but see, I prefer them to be completely dry both sides and uh, they're not really. It's also possible that uh, maybe that turkey, that can of turkey was just too moist. I usually use the chicken breast, the canned chicken breast which might be drier. I'm thinking in the turkey. I don't know what parts they use, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but you can see, you know, that all three of these work. Now, which one is right for you? Um, if you're just like me, I mean, I think I would probably, I would probably go for this one because the, the noodles are, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're not a bad size. They're, you know, fettuccine type size. Um, if you really wanted the spaghetti type, then you could go with this one, you know, for cost savings over that. Um, so yeah, it really depends on your needs and your uses. And uh, the thing is, if you have a KitchenAid and you already have this attachment, no need to even look at these. You have, you have what you need already. And if you don't have a KitchenAid and you don't have any of these attachments and you're not happy with how you cut your noodles, I think this one is the one to go for. Um, yeah, it's quite a, quite a cost savings. So, I mean, if you, you, you don't need any of these in the past. If you look at any of my old pasta videos on YouTube, all of them, I rolled up the mat of pasta, or the pasta sheet. You just roll it up like a jelly roll and cut it up with a knife. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've been perfectly happy with that. Um, I think I would probably use this going forward rather than lugging these two things out. Um, I will probably gift this one <laughs> to one of my kids and maybe even that one. Uh, my daughter has got the KitchenAid, so she might like that one. Um, but, 
you know, I, I kind of like this one. So anyways, um, watch later on, maybe next week, I will make some dinner with these noodles. And uh, I, I have one in mind that I'm going to make and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I was concerned about how soft the noodles were for using them in a recipe. So I just decided to throw them in my uh, Ninja Air Fryer. I put it on the dehydrate option, and this is after 45 minutes. They've kind of dried, you know, there's still a few soft ones in there, but they've more or less dried out. They're not completely dry but they're gonna be perfect for using in a recipe. So just wanted to throw that out there um, in case you ever accidentally undercook your noodles. Hey everybody, have you wondered which, it no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you notice that you need to have a little bit of clearance. <laughs> Oops, wait, no. Today I'm going to try out all three of these pasta cutters. That makes it pasta. Hey everyone, today I'm going to make some protein noodles, pasta noodles, and... <coughs> Hi everyone, today I'm going to make some protein noodles, and then I am going to... It's in the oven, I have to get it out, I'm just... <laughs>